Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Made You Book. My name's Gretchen and today I figured that I would do the end of the year book tag. So I'm excited. This is my first tag video. Um, I didn't officially get tagged, but I was watching um, Renee from The Left-Handed Reader, um, and she did her end of the year book tag video, and I watched that this morning, and I absolutely love her content. She always has just the, the most wonderful things to say, and she reads all over the place, which I am just absolutely fascinated by. And I I always get the best recommendations by watching her videos. So um, if you don't subscribe, I will go ahead and link her below because she puts out fantastic content. Um, so she did this and I can't remember who the original um, person that started this tag was, but whoever it was, thank you. Um, and I figured, hey, what the heck? Um, I have been more of a mood reader this year, which has really never been my style before. I have always been very structured, very strict with my TBRs and what I was reading. And then I started to watch booktube more and more and every time I turned around there was a new book that I wanted to read and I just found myself getting to the point where I just I, I felt like I was out of the loop like I wasn't able to stay on top of the current reads that everybody else was talking about in the moment and I told myself that I was going to just start being more of a mood reader but because of that I've noticed that now that it is toward the end of the year I'm a little less organized than I normally am and I thought that this tag is a great opportunity to kind of just reassess what my situation is as far as the books that I still need to finish and get to um, and this was just a great opportunity to also share that with, um, with my channel. So um, I have a huge pile of books here uh, to talk about and for any of you that um, want to you know participate in the tag feel free to do so um, I found like going through the list of all the books that I um, want to talk about during this was very therapeutic and it was just a great way for me to kind of hold myself accountable and kind of stay on track with what I want to finish by the end of the year. So um, I and also I love to watch the end of book year, uh, the end of year book videos. So if you guys are all creating them, it means I have more stuff to watch. So win win. So um, I think, yeah, there's six questions. And the first one is, are there um, any books you've started this year that you still need to finish? Of course there are. <laughs> I am notorious for being in about six or seven different books and that is definitely the case right now and there are a handful here that I need to finish. So the first one is um, no surprise uh, there's still one more book that I'm reading for the Booker Prize long list and that's How to Build a Boat. I don't actually have the book with me, it's downstairs, um, but I started reading this the other day and I am absolutely loving it. I'm flying through it. So um, I travel for work tomorrow and I have um, two flights. So I'm hoping that I can get this finished on um, my travels tomorrow. And I, I hope that I still continue to love it um, as much as I am right now. And I will finally be done with this year's Booker list. And then once I do that, um, we've actually got the announcement, I think, in two weeks, um, two weeks to the 
day, I think. Today is the 12th, so um, I think they are making the announcement on a Sunday this year, which is odd, um, but um, I'm hoping to put together a list of the shortlisted books and my ranking and my hope and my prediction for what is going to win, so more to come with that. Um, so the next couple books that I need to talk about are books that I am reading for book clubs and I am, I belong to a few Patreon book clubs and unfortunately last month um, I was not able to read the October selection for Eric Carl Anderson's The Lonesome Reader book club. Um, so I need to get to that one and then there is the um, current one for November which I also um, need to finish as well. So the October selection was The Waves by Virginia Woolf. And for any of you that follow um, his channel, you will know that this is his favorite book of all time. And I am so looking forward to getting to this. I love Virginia Woolf's writing to begin with. And I really um, admire um, Eric's taste in books. So I, I have a feeling that I'm going to absolutely love this. Um, seeing some of the conversation that was going back and forth, um, in his discord channel about the book, um, it, it it seemed like everybody was really enjoying it. Um, it seems like it's a, a heavier read um, and, and one that's maybe going to take a little bit more brain power to get through. But regardless, I'm still really looking forward to getting to this one. Um, and, and this month's selection is The Vaster Wilds by Lauren Groff. And I was so excited to see this one um, be the choice. Um, I just so happened to get this as my book of the month selection um, and it was perfect because I already had it, but I have actually never read a Lauren Groff book before. I know, right? Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I've heard really nothing but good things about her writing and I am really excited about this one specifically. Um, uh, not just because of it being uh, by Lauren Groff and a new author for me, um, but it's also on the shorter side. Um, so with having a bunch of books to fit in before the end of the year, I was kind of glad for it to be a little on the shorter side. Um, so, uh, so that was the October, or I'm sorry, the November selection. And then I am also um, in the book club for the wonderful Scott from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Um, and we are reading um, Julia for our, um, our November book club pick. And I am so excited about this one. Um, this has been one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I absolutely love 1984. And I also plan on doing a reread of that before I get into this one. Um, only because I've read 1984 several times, but I would say it's probably been about maybe five, five years since I've read it last. And I just want to make sure that everything is fresh in my mind from that very famous last line of 1984. I want to be able to pick this up and go straight into it. So, um... I, I, yeah, I, I haven't really heard too much about this book. Um, I'm actually surprised because I think it's been out for a few weeks and I really haven't heard anything about it yet, but, um, maybe it's because people are doing a reread of 1984 before they get to this one, but, um, yeah, really excited and, um, cannot wait to be able to dig into this one. And then I have one more book that I absolutely have to finish by the end of this year. And um, 
So I talked about um, Scott's book club. I talked about Eric's book club. Um, I also belong to the Hardcore Literature book club um, that Benjamin McAvoy runs. And I'm it, it, for any of you that are not familiar with his channel or his Patreon book club, I will leave the details below um, as well as um, the other content creators that I've mentioned. Um, but he focuses on classics, like both um, age-old classics and modern classics, um, and he goes deep, deep, deep into these classics. And he has a whole series on um, several books. I think he's been doing this now for um, a few years. Um, and he also, I think, just hit um, 100,000 subscribers not too long ago. So congrats um, on that achievement. Um, I can totally see why um, he has such a massive following. His content is incredible. It is well-researched. And every time I pick up one of his books that he is um, uh, doing his lectures on, I am just, I, I'm just astonished at how much I learn from him um, and how these books that some of them I've read in the past just completely come alive and he has taught me so much about how to be a better reader and truly appreciate literature for what it is and not just what is between the pages but also what is the other kind of adventures that the book takes you on. Um, so I started at the very beginning of his book club last year, and um, I've already I've read Anna Karenina, Crime and Punishment. Um, there were a few others that I've already read too, and the one that I am actively on is Don Quixote by Cervantes. Now um, I am loving this book. Um, it is probably one of the funniest books that I have ever read. Like I never thought that a book that is as old as it is um, and a, a classic that uh, classics aren't supposed to make you laugh. Um, but this has me in stitches sometimes. It is so funny um, and I am learning so much and I cannot wait to fit get through this um not because I am bored but just because I want to know the rest of the story and I'm about 300 pages in um I'm annotating very heavily um there are the way that um Ben sets up his lectures is he'll have you read to a certain page and then there is a video that he does and usually the lectures are uh like you maybe like 45 minutes to an hour, but he digs very deep in um, the content that you had just finished. And it is just amazing to be able to um, learn and, and hear about all of that stuff before you move to the next section. So you really feel like an expert at the end of any of the books that are in his book club. And um, this is kind of the big one that I've worked on this year. And um, I'm really looking forward to my next read from his book club, which will be at the end of this video when we talk about my, um, my plan for 2024. Um, so the next question is, um, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? And of course I do. I, I mean, come on. 
<laughs> I love this time of year. I've already read, um, now granted we're almost in the middle of November, so I'm a little behind the times with this book tag. I've already transitioned into fall. Um, I, I love this time of year. Um, fall and winter are my seasons and um, I've already read several, but there's still one more that I really want to get to to kind of transition, and that is Quartet in Autumn by Barbara Pym. Um, this is um, on my list because of Renee from The Left-Handed Reader. I love um, when she talks about Barbara Pym and how much she enjoys her writing. Um, I think she also, um, in one of her more recent videos, is going to be looking or looking to read another one of Barbara Pym's books. Um, but I have not read anything by this author. So I'm really excited. The cover is stunning. Um, and I don't know much about it, but it does say autumn in the title and there are pictures of trees and leaves on the ground. So I'm assuming it's autumnal. Um, I, I I hope I'm not wrong um, and look foolish for, for having this as be my autumnal book, but, um, but I think it's pretty safe to say that it'll fit the bill and I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. Now, the next question is, are there any new releases that I'm still waiting for? Um, yes, but I don't think I'm going to get to read them this year, um, but I'm still super excited about some. Um, two specifically, um, I'm really excited about Day by Michael Cunningham. Um, it's been over 10 years, I think, since um, he has put out a book. Um, I know that um, he is a beloved author. I also know that you knowing how much I love the Booker Prize, um, I have a feeling that this is going to be a, a potential contender and I'm really um, looking forward to um, getting a copy of that one and reading it. And then the other one is um, Louise Kennedy has a short story collection coming out that's called The End of the World is a Cul-de-Sac. And I am really, really looking forward to that one. I read Trespasses by Louise Kennedy. Um, it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize this year, and that was one of my favorite books in that list this year. It was a wonderful book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. I loved her writing. I loved her characters. Um, and I am really curious to see how she handles the short story format. I love a good short story collection, um, and her writing was just so beautiful in Trespasses that I am really, um, I'm really convinced that this is going to be a good collection, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, the next question is, what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Um, and you know that I'm always extra, so um, I can't just pick three. There's actually four that I um, I definitely want to read. Uh, specifically, two of them are library books, so I want to make sure, and there were long holds for them, so I want to make sure I read them while I have them because I don't want to go to the end of that queue again. Um, the first is The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store uh, by James McBride. Um, I have never read a book by James McBride, but I have been hearing such wonderful things about this and um, it just sounds like a beautiful story um, and I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. Um, I don't know too much about this one other than I think that during um, an ex ex excavation for building a housing development. Um, the workers uncover a human skeleton and um, we kind of learn um, throughout the story um, more about who the skeleton belonged to, what led to everything. And um, it also um, just talks about um, 
I think it it's heavy with um, not only the African American community but also the Jewish community. I think that there was um, a, a neighborhood where both of those groups um, really thrived together um, and they made a great little community. So I'm really looking forward to learning more um, and getting into this one. Um, the next one is, um, I am so excited about this one. It just makes me smile every time I look at this cover. Um, but that is <laughs> Starter Villain by John Scalzi. And I am really looking forward to this one because it sounds like it's going to be hysterical. So one thing before I tell you about this book is I, um, so I do book of the month and I will be perfectly honest, although I love book of the month, I will say that my reading tastes are not really aligning lately with a lot of their selections. And I was watching a video by Russell at the Ink and Paper blog. Um, if you don't follow his channel, he is a great source of book recommendations. And he did an unboxing for a newer book box subscription that I was not aware of called Aardvark. And um, yeah, so I decided that I was going to switch um, and I, found this as my first pick for last month and I just think that it's going to be such a fun ride. I mean that cover, look at that. How can you look at that and not just smile? Um, so basically I think this story follows um, our main character and he's kind of just he's having like a mundane life he's really not finding any joy I think maybe he's going through a divorce or something um, he has kind of like a job that he's not happy with um, and he has a cat <laughs> um, and then one day um, he finds out that his uncle has passed away and his uncle was a supervillain and he has inherited um, all of the uncle's like legacy as a supervillain. So the main character has to step in and take over. And I don't think that his uncle had some great relationships with some people out there. So it sounds just like a really fun adventure. Um, and I will also say that this book came recommended from one of my subscribers. Um, and uh, she said that she listened to the audio and she said it was a lot of fun. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. Um, I know the holidays can be like a crazy time and, and sometimes you just need something that's going to make you laugh and I definitely feel like this is going to do that for me. Um, another one that I've been hearing a lot of buzz about and the whole just came in on my lab in my library and I definitely want to get to it and that is The Center um, by um, Aisha Man Manazir Siddiqui and I have heard amazing things about this book. Um, I think that what I do know about this book is there's apparently this place that you can go to. It's kind of like, um, I don't want to say school, but it's, it's like an institute or a center where you can go and you can pay a large sum of money and you will learn and become fluent in whatever language you select in a matter of days. So um, I think our main character is a translator um, and I don't know what language she currently translates, but obviously knowing that and that this place exists, I'm sure it opens up a world of opportunity for her and her career. Um, I'm also sure that there's probably some sinister things going on um, that allow this to happen. Um, so yeah, I, I know um, I, I've heard really good things about it so far. I haven't heard anything bad. Um, and I've seen that there have been a few videos that have popped up that I haven't been able to watch yet. So uh, yeah, this is one that I'm excited about and um, need to get it done 
sooner than later because I don't want to have to wait in that queue again. And then the final one that I am really looking to get to before the end of the year is Northwoods by Daniel Mason. This book um, was an immediate cover buy for me. I saw it and was like, I have to have that in my life because I just adore, I love cats and that's just such a beautifully, it's just a stunning cover. But the story sounds really interesting as well. So what this book is, um, is basically there is this house in the woods and it has several um, residents in it throughout hundreds and hundreds of years. And the book kind of, I think, just breaks it down by each of the residents that has been in the house and just tells you all of the unique stories about all of the different people that have lived in it. And um, it just sounds very... Um, I don't know. It just sounds very quaint. It sounds like something right up my alley. Um, and I, I heard there's a big cat in it. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And, uh, let's see. Number five, is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? Um, I don't think so. Um, I... I think that the books that I have left to read this year have pretty big shoes to fill. I have had so many amazing reads this year and I, um, I, I think that there's two that I'm kind of going back and forth with as being my favorite and I do not foresee any of these ones even coming close. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, you never know. I mean, if we, if we were confident that we have already read the best book of our lives, like why would we even bother to give other books a try? So it doesn't mean I'm not excited about reading these books. Absolutely. And I hope I'm wrong. And one of them does become my favorite book. Um, but as of right now, like I said, they have some pretty stiff competition, um, specifically with a few of the books that were on the Booker long list that ended up being some of my favorite reads of not only this year, but ever. Um, so, so, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, and then uh, I, I need to start putting together a list of what my favorites of the year are for the end of next month. Um, and who knows, maybe one of these will make it. Um, but I don't think that any of them are going to be my favorite favorite, but we'll see. Um, and then the last question is, have you already started making reading plans for next year? And the answer is yes. Um, I mentioned that I am um, trying to finish Don Quixote for the hardcore literature um, current book, re or book that I'm reading. And then once I'm done with that, I will move on to the next one um, that I the next one in line, which is another beast. And I'm not going to lie, it terrifies me. But I already know that I um, like the story in general. Um, and I just hope that the book pays off. And that is, oh, <laughs> Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. It is a beast. Um, we are clocking in at... I think over 1300 pages. Um, oh, oh yeah. Yes, definitely over 13, over 1300 pages. It weighs like five pounds. It is super small text. There are not a lot of page breaks. 
it's gonna take a while, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, what I know about this story, I I loved the musical. Um, I haven't seen the movie, but um, I've heard that that's fantastic too. I'm not gonna watch it before I read. Um, I, I just wanna go into this um, knowing just what I know um, and hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully it is is worth it. And from what I heard, it is a much quicker read than you would think. Um, and like I said, uh, doing and digesting huge books like this with the Hardcore Literature Book Club, with all of the videos and the lectures that go along with it, just make for such a satisfying reading experience that I am, um, I, I say that I'm scared, but I know that I'm in good hands. Um, and, uh, and yeah, this will probably be uh, one of my bigger projects for next year. Um, and then um, I also, um, I want to start to read more of the Booker long list from over the past um, however many years. I think the inaugural Booker was back in 1969 and I would really like to start to dig into some of those previous years. I've only really picked up with the Booker within the last few years so everything has been very current and I would really like to start to dig into some of those 70s, 80s, 90s years and just kind of see like the evolution of the Booker. The Booker is a very interesting prize. There has been a lot of different changes throughout the years in structure and format and um, I, I think that it's also, I also like the idea of reading a list of books that were all out in the same year and were all competing for the same prize within the same year and kind of compare those to each other. So I think one of my goals for my channel next year is to start to randomly choose Booker years and read the entirety of the long lists. Um, I will say some of them didn't have long lists. Um, some of them just had short lists. So there are definitely going to be years that are easier or quicker to get through. Um, and then, you know, as we get more into like the modern Booker, that's where we have our Booker Dozen with the 13 um, long listed and then I think six short listed and then eventually the winner. Um, I'm also um, still trying to decide how I'm going to determine what year I read. I don't really want to do it in chronological order. I think for me, I don't want to get stuck in the past. Um, I, I, I don't want the project to become a chore. So I think that if I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between decades, it's going to give me that nice balance of um, more classic or older books along with the more contemporary books. So um, I, I'll, I'll have to figure out exactly what my plan is for choosing the years. Um, and then what I'd ultimately like to do is get through all of those. Obviously, it's not going to be a project that is done in a year. It's going to take me some time to get through those, but I love a challenge. And, um, and, and yeah, I, I just think that I, I'm constantly reading. So if I have more, um, if I kind of like have a structured plan of reading so many years of the Booker in a year, that still gives me more opportunity to read new releases and stay um, kind of current with the things that are um, coming out that everybody's talking about. And I'm not going to get stuck just reading older um older books. So, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to starting fresh. 
um, with for next year. I've had an amazing reading year and I I'm hoping that the, the last, you know, six, seven weeks that we have left um, are equally as rewarding and I cannot wait to start fresh next year with um, new books and new reading projects. Um, so if any of you out there have a channel, um, consider yourself tagged to do this video as well. Like I said, I love watching them um, and I like I need more book recommendations, right? But uh, I do love watching them uh, just to hear what everybody else is reading, what everybody else is loving. And yeah, so thank you for taking the time to watch this. Um, if you liked this video, go ahead and hit subscribe. Um, and until next time, we'll see you. Bye.